hello there sam is here and thank you so much for coming back to this video in today's video i'm going to show you one way in which you can make virtual dj do some things on its own while you have your fingers on other things this is what i call action automation i'm just going to press a play button over here and everything like samplers or effects or some other things like scratch dna will be working on their own and let's take a look For more information, please contact 0784 908 751. Alright guys, so I hope you saw that. Now how is this done? I'm going to do this in what is called the POI editor. I think this is a points editor, if not anything. And also by the way, I always promised you I'm going to do at least a keyboard mapping in every video. So this keyboard mapping is going to go as a bonus tip over here. So how do we get to the POI editor? We can do this for the song that we want to, do, to work on. We're going to maybe go to the POI editor of the song that is currently loaded on the deck. We can do that by coming to this and then right clicking on it. And then we say POI. Here it says POIS editor. And when you click there, it brings you over here to the POI editor. You can also do that in your track list over here. You can still right click on it and then come to POIS editor. It will bring you to the POI editor. And I like using the keyboard, so I have a mapping that I just press and then it brings me there. So I'm going to give you that tip. Let me even start by that. Let's go to the, your mapping section in your settings and then come here. Our oh, mine is like this. I've given it a condition like if it's on double click, it will go to edit POI and then delete Q. But that was to me. For your case, you can just say edit and then underscore POI. It's even here edit POI and when you save that and you click on that key it will always bring you to the POI editor so that's where that's where we are so I'm going to if you realize it well I was working with hot cues like cue points right and you can see them over here so before you can even choose to come here you should make sure you have your cue points for the track that you want to work on and by the way, for your information, if you do this on a track, it stays for even a long while, like for even years, as long as you still have the track in your database. And you can choose to change it on your own by removing those hot cues. But you set it now, you can still play it next year. All right, so before you can come here, make sure you set all your hot cues. So I have mine already set. If I come to hot cues, I even have more than 10. I have 11 hot cues here. And you cannot be limited by the number of hot cues as long as you you are free to set on your keyboard the, the number that you want. You can even have up to maybe 20. Who knows that? Check that out. Uh, so you have your hot cues mapped already. Now we're going to go to the POI editor. This is going to only work for one song, for this particular song, not for any other song in the deck. And uh, we are going to work with hot cues. Hot Q1. I'm just going to, uh, by the way, I already have all these things set, so I'm just going to break them down. I'm just going to explain them as I show you the mappings on screen. I'm not going to be typing slowly because I don't want this to be a very lengthy video just for you to get the concept. So Hot Q1, which is Q1 here, you can decide to give it a name of your own, but I've left mine as Q1. And then when you come to this type, this drop down arrow here says, there are very many things you can use this hot, this Q4, this Q1 here, you can use it for many things. And we said we are looking at action automation, so we shall come to action. I'm not going to explain all these things here because I know you can still search for them on your own and then get the concepts right. So when we come to action, it will provide a box here for you to write something. And by the way, it has changed my thing, but it's okay. So you can type here any fancy keyboard mapping that you know. For example, we want to play a sampler at this point of Q1. You can say sampler. Sampler. Play. I like using play starter. I like 
I like I like samplers to play and then stutter. Just just make sure you type these things correctly. So I'm going to say this is sampler one. And so when without saving, there's nothing like saving here. When I come there, the first sampler, this one, should be able to play with my song as I play the song when I set. So we're going to go back there. Oh, that one already works. But also, if you have samplers like me, you can be more specific. For example, you can you can you can give a specific bank. You can assign this play a specific sampler from a specific bank, like a sampler bank. So I'm just going to cut this. And I want to say, let me, let me put this a little bit the other side so I can see my sampler banks. Let me even resize it if possible. So I'm going to say I want this sampler here famous. Okay, so I will go to sampler bank. And also, if you feel like this space is little for you, you can just come over here to the macro editor. Just click that, it will bring you here where you can have all these actions. So we say sampler. All right, sampler bank. It's here. Sampler bank. You open quotes and then you specify. So I'm going to use the sampler bank for famous in quotes. Famous is here. The name of that bank is famous. And the sampler I wanted to play, it's K Sam Fire Again Mixed Down. Sampler bank. And then you're going to now say sampler, sampler play starter one. Okay, sampler underscore play and then starter and then one. You can also be specific enough, by the way, you can put, you can specify the sampler by just opening quotes and then maybe right clicking here to make sure you get the right spelling of this sampler. You come over to the name and copy it. And then you come and paste it here in quotes. Remove that one. So when that is like that, the first sampler will play and the next time you start at the song still it will play when the song is at that position of Q1. I don't know if I'm getting I'm bringing the concept the right way, but that is it. And then for Q2, I also have this set. Sampler bank finger. Okay. I have a sampler bank called finger. If I extend this up here. And if I resize this, sorry, I can't resize it. Let me just close that first. All right, so if I resize this, I have a sampler bank called finger over here. This one. So the sampler, the sampler number two, which is this one here, will be played from this sampler bank. This one here. That's how I set it. And then for Q3, I'm going to activate the cut effect. I've just said effect cut active. This is how it should look. Effect cut active. Just the usual way of mapping. And then for Q.4, I have this setting here. Effect cut will be active. So what you should notice here is that this, this is the second time you're saying the effect cut should be active. Remember at the previous point it was activated, so the time it reaches here, instead of activating it, it will deactivate it. Hope you get the concept. And then after that, after deactivating the cut effect, the reverb effect will be activated and there will be an echo effect at the same time. That is at Q.3, uh, I think. Yeah, that's Q.3. Wow, that was Q4. Rather, sorry for that. And then you the other thing you should also know is you can arrange your cue points whatever way you want you can have q.9 coming before q.4 or q.5 whatever way you choose so to me i've put my q.9 before q.5 so q.9 will take me to the sampler bank which is called finger and play and then start a sampler 16. that is it on for q.5 I've said it's going to disable all effects. Let me just enlarge this. Remember the other reverb was on, there was an echo. So this, at this point, all those effects will disappear on their own without you having to touch or do anything with them. Just like that. At Q.10, which I have put before 6, I'm going to activate the stems effect. Okay, I'm going to activate the stems effect and then I'll activate the flanger effect. 
this stems effect will deactivate stems if we had it before let's say we had st set the stems effect at uh, q.1 if it reaches this point still with the same mapping it will deactivate the other stems effect if it was flanger at this point and this is the second point of flanger let's say for example if it was active before and then it reaches here with this same mapping it's going to deactivate it just get the concept all right so i'm going to go quite to quite faster to six and then these for 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 q.6 i've said i'm going to this sampler bank called finger i'll play the, the sampler five and i will activate the flanger effect this is what i was talking about is here now so remember the other effect is active so we are going to deactivate it here i've also put a scratch dna just for by the way doesn't fit here but just going to show you that it works because i want you to hear it playing all right so uh q.7 q.8 and q.11 so 7 is here i'm going to go to sampler bank famous and then play sampler 2 and then q.8 i'm going to stop all samplers which are playing currently and i'm going to activate the effect like the deck active one which is this which is stems okay which is stems and i will put echo on that is at point seven and then at point eleven which is my last i'm going to go back to q5 and let it play again so now this going back to q5 only works once like you had it in the intro of this video it goes back to q5 the next time it comes it will just bypass it so just take it from that like that i hope you get the concept guys i've tried my best to put the mappings down below if you have any questions please do it in the comment section down below i have a whatsapp group that is temporarily running and you can join if you if you really like it if you want to contact me i will have the, the link in the description here so we can get everything done as close as possible hope to see you in the next video